Welcome to the Aristocrat Soccer Podcast, the elite soccer podcast in all of soccer podcasting and podcasting in general. I'm David Harris, and I'm here with Jake Keegan. Jake, how are you? Dave, you ask me that every time, and every time I'm saying I'm good. Still good. <laughs> well, you never know. You always got to ask just to make sure, you know? <laughs> yes, it's, it's great to be joined by you on this elite podcast that we share together, so. Soccer, football, aristocrats. <laughs> and before we get started, uh, discuss the topic of this episode, which is the uh, Goodbye Greenville, Hello Madison episode. Uh, we need to do a quick shout out to our friends with the Footwork Soccer Podcast. The, also the elite soccer podcast, <laughs> the soccer podcasting below us, but close to us. Because apparently... Uh, they felt that we had not uh, recognized them uh, on, you know, in the in the time that we've been doing this podcast, which is factually inaccurate. And if they actually listened to our podcast and listened all the way, they would have heard a shout out in previous times to their podcast. But unfortunately, they did not hear that. So, on their most recent episode. The first one that they've hosted within two weeks. Uh, so they'll have to up their game a little bit and post a little more regularly if they're going to be an elite podcast. But they did post one today, finally, giving us a not so brief update on their latest adventures, which really weren't that exciting. But anyway, they gave us an update anyway and uh, let us know that we hadn't given them a shout out, and uh, which again, factually incorrect, but you know. We want to officially give them a shout out. So Jake, please shout out as well. Footwork Soccer Podcast. Let me just, what was, what was their name again? I can't, oh, 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 yeah. oh Footwork, yes. Oh, Foot, yeah, Footwork. Footwork. Foot, footwork. The guys, yeah. Dylan, Dylan Williams. I don't know Dylan who Williams. it. Is it uh, okay. Bob and Joe or something? Okay, Footwork Podcast. Uh, honestly, guys, we, we, we joke, but we love Dylan and Sean at Footwork yeah. Podcast. I'm good friends with them. Dave is friends with him as well. Um, good guys. I don't, I don't, they seem like nice guys. Yeah, okay. Dave Dave tolerates them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, they, they're both playing over in Germany in the regional Liga. And they're just, they're doing a similar podcast to ours. Actually, I think we may have gotten our idea kind of from them. And they, they started a few months prior. And I started listening to theirs. I was a guest on their podcast, episode 20, if you want to give it a listen for them. And uh, we, we talked about it. And I think they really kind of helped kick us into gear I, I was listening to your episode and and I was just like yeah we gotta like really finally do this you know I was just like I thought they did a great job and it just sounded like a lot of fun and I was just kind of remembering why you know we had started talking about it and wanting to do it so yeah yeah they've they've had some great guests on they also kind of get behind like kind of the mental part of the game the behind the scenes of a player so if you want to check it out, of course, after you have finished listening to our episodes, you can then go over to Footwork Podcast. If you've run through all of ours, uh, then we will allow you to go to Footwork. But great guys at Footwork. Here is the longest shout out in the history of the word, world Footwork. So I think we've covered all shout outs for the next year, part of our contract. Uh, Davey, let's get to the episode. Yes. So the episode, the episode, the final episode of this uh, run for you in Greenville uh for now anyway so uh just take us through a little bit if, if you can so it's goodbye greenville hello madison by the time uh this comes out uh will, it'll, it will have been announced it's already been announced uh you know that uh you 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 and greenville hadn't agreed on on contract uh to continue for next season and uh by the time this comes out uh the madison deal's already been done so it'll be announced so just Take us through that a little bit and the thought process there and um, what you feel comfortable talking about, you know, and, and, you know, we can't obviously say everything that's going on, but, you know, there's not that there's a lot of dirt or anything to talk about, but, you know, certain things need to, you know, stay confidential for various reasons, you know, for obvious reasons. So. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll just walk us through. So we, we win the final, everybody's happy, great. And, at that point, I think I was planning to return to Greenville. I was very, I was, of course, I, as always, when you're, as my contract, I had a two-year contract with Greenville and it ran up, 
it's actually still not up. It expires December 31st, but this was my last season of the contract. And you're always looking, but I think I was planning on returning to Greenville and that was my thought process. I figured that was probably going to happen. I, I love playing with the team. Uh, John's an excellent coach, uh, great guys on the team. We had a good culture and I, I really enjoyed the city of Greenville, the supporters. I mean, everything about the club has been very good to me. Uh, so I, I, I wasn't planning on leaving the defending champions. That's not something that normally happens um, unless you're pushed out, which was not the case for me. Um, but I mean, really without getting into too much detail, I, there was, there was, I mean, there's factors that go into your decision. And um, when Carl Craig um, became head coach, uh, he reached out to me, I believe it was the next day. You actually, so I don't know if I should share this because Greenville might uh, torch your house or something, but Greenville supporters, but Dave actually was the one who uh, orchestrated this deal. He reached out to, did you reach out to Carl or Neil? Well, I reached out to Carl and then um, then Neil got back to me. And um, and then from there, uh, you, you know, I shared your information and your contact information, which I've shared with pretty much everybody who listens to the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, <laughs> prior to me, yeah. Prior to that, um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> all, all 50 people. Um, prior to that, I had been in discussions and you had been in discussions with a few teams, both in League One and the Championship with Galway in Ireland and um, there was talks and then also a, a team in Finland, but not, none of it was really looking like it was going to happen. I was still always planning to come back to Greenville. And then when Madison reached out, um, I was very impressed with speaking to both Carl and Neil. We, we got on a zoom call probably literally the day after Carl was hired. Um, and we got on a zoom call. I was very impressed. And with just the way they had the plans for the club um, seemed like great guys and then we got off the call and shortly thereafter, they made me an offer, a good offer. And um, I even kind of getting off that call, I think I was still leaning towards Greenville just because it was safer because I mean, we had one, I'm comfortable here, all these different things. Um, but I think Madison had some positives that Greenville couldn't top and Greenville had some positives that Madison couldn't top. And for me, it really came down to, there were, there were four, probably four specific things that kind of tilted the, uh, we won't get into exactly what they were, uh, but they kind of tilted things in Madison's favor. And to be perfectly honest, if one or even two of those things had gone and had been moved in Greenville's favor, I probably would still be in Greenville. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of ongoing negotiations and different things, but I mean, it, it, there's a variety of, I mean, when you're a player, there's things that go into your decisions, there's a million things. There's there's living, like, do you want to live in warm weather or cold weather or is the city nice or is your apartment nice or like, what is, how successful is the club? What are the, what are your teammates like? What's the coach like? There's a, what's the salary? Like, there's so many things that go into a player's decision. And for me, like, there were four specific things that I, in my mind, that came down to and Madison was, was ahead in all four. And, it, and even then it was kind of like, am I really going to do this? We were talking, it was mm. like, we were like, am I really going to leave? And um, I think sometimes you just have to, you can't be afraid uh, to make a change. And I, I think I arrived at the right decision. You never really know uh, until things play out, but I, I'm happy with my decision. I'm, I can't wait to get going at Madison. Uh, it's, I think it's a great opportunity. It's a, it's a really well-run club. Um, definitely one of the best, especially in league one and even around the USL in general. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting started. Well, you know, like I, I'll, I'll, I won't go into a lot of detail of what we discussed or anything. You can just, um, I think, you know, from my perspective, when I was talking with you, um, you know, um, I think there's a lot of factors with the pandemic that, that have affected this, you know, situation with, uh, you know, the financial situation with the clubs throughout soccer. It's affecting everybody, right? It's affecting all throughout the world, you know, and, and, you know, I'm talking, you know, just soccer specifically with the pandemic and it's definitely affecting USL and it's affecting uh, MLS. So, you know, there are factors there uh, that do play a part, you know, and, and, and affect the clubs, what they can and can't do as far as signing, resigning players. So, you know, to be fair to Greenville, to be fair to everybody, you know, like that definitely plays a part. Um, and then, you know, I think the other thing is just that, you know, I try to look when, when we talk about 
you know, and when I try to help you, and again, I'm not Jake's agent, I'm not anybody's agent, you know, I thought about doing it, but I'm, I'm at this point, I'm just sort of focusing on my own career, life, and everything, I'm not really looking to do the agent stuff, maybe down the road, who knows, but for now, no, but I'm really, I'm your advocate, you know, just trying to help you find a club, right, and there's no compensation, I'm not, other than Jake Keegan jersey I might get or something like that. That's it. So just to be really clear. The, the, the occasional not, bobblehead. Yeah, exactly. I'm not Jake Keegan, but I do try to look at it from the perspective of like your parents and like, you know, if you were my kid kind of thing. And and also like, you know, I mean, I only met Caroline once, but you know, girlfriend, you know, so without going into too much about that, you know, but just, I try to factor these things in, you know, and for me, I think I would have strangled you if you didn't take the Madison offer. So you know, it's just not that it's, um, you know, I don't want to, without going into too much detail, I just, you know, it's not like it's um, anything that would blow anybody away, but just, you know, you're you're still a young man, but you are 30 years old. Like, you know, I think you need to be able to make a certain amount of money doing this and, you know, have a comfortable living situation. And not that Greenville wouldn't have provided that, but it just, you know, who knows, you know, with everything with the pandemic, you know, it's just, I think the the offer from Madison is a little more stable and, you know, at this point in time, and I, I completely get it from perspective of both clubs, from what you explained to me, everything makes sense. There's no any kind of like, I don't think there's any types of hard feelings or anything like that. And, um, you know, so it just, you know, again, like I think if I were your parents, I think they would probably be saying to you, like, Jake, if you're going to play another year, you know, and uh, and continue doing this, that, you know, Madison, you know, would be uh, the best option for you. And then also, you know, I like the idea, you know, personally, again, just my own, you know, self, but, you know, uh, Galway, you know, I think I, I give them a lot of respect, you know, like you, you just posted the announcement online, you know, that you were leaving Greenville, which you thought you did a great job of. And, you know, I didn't really, uh, you know, that was all you and, 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 you know, I think it was well received and, and, you know, I was really, uh, I saw some of the posts from the Galway supporters and, it, and you know, it just kind of, it's a nice feeling, you know, it must be a nice feeling for you. It's a nice feeling for me having family from that area. My grandmother came from that part of the, of Ireland, you know, it's, it's kind of nice. It kind of reminds me of a lot of that sentiment of like how they would act, you know, like Jake would love to see you back and everything. And I would love to have seen you go to Galway as we discussed many times personally, but on the other hand, you know, I think I'd also rather see you here in the U S where like, you know, if your parents or Caroline or somebody wants to go visit you, you know, hopefully it's not that difficult for them with the pandemic, but it, relatively short trip to Madison, not too, too bad, you know, so. Yeah, the, the, uh, the, the COVID, the pandemic side of things definitely played a part. Um, I think I would have been more likely to leave and take an opportunity like Galway because I love Galway. I love the fans, love the club, and I would have loved to get them promoted, help get them promoted again. I think there's a very good chance they'll get promoted anyway. Um, I think that uh, John Caulfield's building a really good squad. Good. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting first division because Shells are also have a very good squad, um, and Cork City are a massive club, probably one of the biggest clubs in Ireland. So I would have, I mean, I would have loved to go. I would have loved to have been a, a part of that. I think it would have been really fun. But I do think the the pandemic side of it, just not knowing like, hey, am I going to be able to travel home at any point, or are people going to be able to come visit me at any point? Um, definitely played a big part. And in terms of Greenville and Madison. It really didn't, in terms of the, the pandemic side of it, yeah, there was no, there was no difference. It was, just, it was a very similar situation. It's the same league, it's the same country, similar distance to New York, where I'm from. Uh, so that, 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 in terms of the pandemic, it didn't factor in Greenville versus Madison. Um, it didn't, in, in, in terms of like the living conditions, in terms of maybe the way the clubs handled the pandemic, maybe a little bit, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, there's, as a player, there's so many factors that go into decisions and there are players out there that will literally say, okay, one club is going to give me X amount of money and the next club is getting me X amount of money plus $500. And so I'll just go with the 500 extra $500. There's players that think like that. And I'm not that kind of player at all. Um, I've taken less money um, to go places that I thought were better opportunities with me uh, for me. And I still would do that. 
Um, I, I mean, I, I thank Greenville because John, it was a great two years. We had a lot of success. And then they also, John wanted me back for a third year. So there was, there was definitely a lot of faith that he showed in me and the club showed in me. Um, but it's, it's just one of those things like you have to run through your list, whether you make a list in your head, you make a list on paper, whatever it is, make a list say, all right, this, this club is better in this area for this specific reason. And the next thing, uh, maybe the other one is, and go run through the list and you have to decide what's most important to you. And if it's just the extra $500, then it's an easy decision because it's just math. Um, but this decision for me was very, very difficult because there were a lot of things that Greenville was probably better at and, or in a more positive situation. And there's a lot of things Madison was. And, and like I said, it really came down to the, there were four points that, that, I'm not going to share, but um, Madison was was yeah, ahead, I guess, you know, what you can say, in, in all four, and, and that led me to the decision. Yeah, you know, it is a personal decision, and, um, but, you know, by the same token, you know, it, Greenville, uh, really, really good club. Uh, you can, you, you, we can even see that by, you know, I mean, I can see that from the outside, you know, the posts, uh, you know, on social media from the folks involved, like running the club and, um, you know, really good club, really good community, uh, great supporters, a lot of, it's obvious that, you know, you and, and, and some of the supporters, you know, a lot of the supporters have built up a, a really good relationship from really good bonds you made there with, uh, some of the fans, some of the young fans, you know, you posted some nice pictures and other folks post those pictures as well. Um, you know, just, you know, really good team, really good group of guys, really good players. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it, it's definitely through this experience with you, you know, I definitely more interested in watching, uh, you know, learning more and watching more games next year, you know, um, and not just the games where we're like you guys play against each other, but you know, uh, some of the other games too. I mean, I think it's a, it's an exciting club. I think they're a credit to the game and in American soccer, you know, and um, the team, the, the organization, the fans, a coach like John Harks. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's nice to see in American soccer that there are clubs uh, throughout the country, more and more and more really good clubs like this that are uh, doing things, you know, the right way, you know, they're doing the best they can to build an environment where fans want to go see a game. And, you know, I wish, you know, living here on Long Island, I wish there was a Greenville Triumph, you know, I wish the Rough Riders were, were the Greenville Triumph, you know, unfortunately, and that's not a knock against the Rough Riders, you know, it's just, it is what it is, you know, I think, I think if there was an opportunity to get a stadium done here on Long Island, we, we probably would have that. But uh, when we had the Cosmos, we do have the Cosmos. So when we had the Cosmos in the NASL, and you know, maybe hopefully again, you know, in, in this uh, this year, that might be our Greenville. But um, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's it, Greenville, great though. It's, it would be really cool to to see the USL club like that here, you know, locally. So I think I hope every soccer community in the country at some point gets a club like that. So um, it's yeah. definitely helping to grow the game. So. Yeah. I, I mean, I wish Greenville nothing but the best. I hope they make three finals in a row. I just hope they lose this one to Madison. Um, yes. <laughs> we have to move forward with Madison. Yeah. Yes. We are good. very, very good with your forward Madison reference there. Um, I mean, I, it's even when you make these decisions, you don't know if it's the right decision until things happen. And you're also, I'm excited for Madison, but I'm also sad. Like in a, in a sense, I'm a little sad because I've made so many great relationships, great relationships in Greenville I'm mean, between Joe Irwin, the, the owner, Doug, his son, Chris Lewis, John Harks, all the staff, like there's so like all the players, there's so many good relationships that I've built and Greenville was a club that there's so many people that are helping this club out that are getting basically nothing um, between like upstate spine and sport, Dr. J, um, who's our team chiropractor, um, like uh, that we have a relationship with cryotherapy our strength and conditioning coach, Ryan Mackey, who's probably the best that I've worked with in my career. There's so many guys, there are so many people in the Greenville community that are helping out the club, not for their own financial gain. Um, they may be getting a little bit of sponsorship revenue or whatever, but they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. And that was probably my favorite part about the club was those people who are just, 
they're just helping out a club. And I'm, I'm going to miss those guys the most, to be honest with you. Brian Mackey's, the Dr. J's, like it's people who are going out of their way. They don't need to think they, they have a business to run on their own. Brian Mackey has a, a night performance factory, which is like a kind of like a CrossFit gym ish, but not, he wouldn't want to be called CrossFit gym, but that's kind of what's like, and he shows up training every day, travels with us. And, and yes, he, I mean, he's a member of the staff, but it's just like, it's not because people are making like big money doing it. It's just because they love the game and they want to help and they want to help their community. And that's the really cool part about playing in this level, whether it's in Ireland, whether it's USL. Um, once you get to MLS, all these guys are full-time employees. They're paid good money. They they provide for their family that way. Whereas at the USL, we can only afford to pay real salaries to a few people in the club. Um, obviously John makes a good salary, but like, he is John Harks. Come on. I mean, hey, he is John Harks. But I'm saying, like, you can, only, <laughs> you can only pay so many people because you're kind of a smaller town club, uh, and and not that he doesn't deserve it. He's he's done a great job over these last couple of years. Uh, but it's just not like, only John Harks. He's the man with the bobblehead. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sadly we missed our, our window. I think to have John Harks as a guest, um, but he's his been his podcast team. then. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he comes on, then we'll, we'll, we'll remove the band. We'll remove the band. It would have been nice to get John. On. He's uh, got great stories from his playing uh, career, down, down the road. Down the road. Down, down the road. We can let the dust settle. But yeah, I mean that's that's the reasoning. That's the explanation of. Madison or goodbye Greenville hello Madison is that what you called it <laughs> well let's <laughs> forward yeah let's go forward to Madison so Carl you've spoken to Carl spoken to Neil uh you know from Madison and um you know you, I, I don't want uh, one, one player uh, uh uh one of their defenders Gustavo Fernandez uh Long Island uh guys I've gotten to know um you know I, I knew his brother Leo first, and Leo's done really, really well for himself. Uh, seeing him, Leo, Leo, a ton of times from his days at Stony Brook to, um, you know, MLS with the Union, Cosmos, Tampa Bay Rowdies, and now his younger brother uh, Gustavo has been playing with Forward Madison. Um, got you know, I've seen Gustavo play, you know, Stony Brook and and you know, youth soccer or I mean, youth soccer, local amateur soccer as well. And now he's playing, um, you know, there and, and some of the others as well. Like, have you had a chance to talk to anybody else from the club and any other thoughts or feedback on Madison so far besides the uh, interesting jerseys they have? Uh, they, they do have very interesting jerseys. Uh, yes, they are very, they're a very unique club. And I, and I think it's, it's something that really works in the U.S. soccer landscape. They're, they sell a lot of jerseys, sell a lot of merchandise. They sell out their stadium when they're allowed to have fans. They, they've done a really good job. And yeah, I mean, I, I talked to Gustavo. I talked to JC Banks, who hasn't currently, as of now, he hasn't signed back for next season, but he's been with them the last two years. Um, I talked to some other former players of Carl when he was at uh, Minnesota United uh, back when, we were in, when he was at Minnesota United in 2016. I was with FC Edmonton. Uh, so I, I, I got the, I mean, I do my research. Uh, you do your research as well. It was funny because we, I texted Gustavo and I think the night before you had texted Gustavo and you got, gave me a report about what Gustavo said about Madison. And I heard he got the same report from Gustavo. So we're, doing, yeah. we're, both, we're both doing our research and I mean, that's how you have to do it. I, I mean, I've asked people about the club that have played for the club. I've asked people about Carl who have played for Carl and you just have to go through your research and do as much as you can because you're never going to know for sure until you're yeah. there. And experiencing yourself but everything i've everyone i've talked to has said great things about the club um the players that they've re-signed so far gustavo josiah trinningham was a center back for he's had i think he had one or two caps for trinidad it's just massive huge center back um then they have re-signed noah fusen i think he's a kind of attacking player and then michael bang who was probably their best he's like a number 10 kind of creative player he was i was impressed with him last year he played a lot seems um, like a real up and comer yeah, I'm a up and coming player. So I'm excited to, to play with those guys, to meet those guys. I'm excited to see uh, who else Carl and Neil bring in. Uh, I have no doubts that they'll build a good squad and, and one that can compete, hopefully, with Greenville. Because Greenville is still, whether I'm there or not, Greenville is still the kind of what is it called, the, the shining club in the league. I mean, making the final the first year and, and winning the title yeah. this past season. So everyone's trying to, trying to catch Greenville, and Madison is no difference. 
Um, so I'm excited for the challenge though. It's I think it's a, it seems like an exciting city. Uh, you mentioned touching the crowd. Uh, you know, I, I kind of joked about the jerseys, but I mean, they are, they are pretty cool. Like they, they definitely are trying to make it, you know, catch your eye and make a statement with the pink flamingo thing. And I think that actually ties into, I was, I was looking it up online. I think it ties into the city. It's like the, the bird of the city or something like that. And, you know, I mean, it just, it's, it, 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 I've always heard of Madison, you know, it seems like it's an up and coming city in the country, you know, and, um, you know, a good place to live and uh, definitely a, a big college town, you know, University of Wisconsin, uh, Madison. So it's, uh, it seems like, you know, there's far, far, far worse places to be going to play uh, without a doubt, I think, than, than Madison, you know, it seems like it'll be a lot of fun, you know, and definitely an interesting experience. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to have to get some snow boots now. I have not <laughs> needed. I have dust them off. I have thrown away all of my winter clothing and boots, um, so I'll have to get some new ones. Uh, have to update uh, the wardrobe. Uh, being in South Carolina, it's I'm actually still in Greenville right now in my apartment, and it's I think it was like 65 degrees today in December. What is today? I have no idea. So you December what? December 14th. December 14th. I would have been anywhere from like seven to 20. I have no idea what day it is anymore. Um, but December 14th and yeah, it's, I mean, it's beautiful here, but we're on to Madison and, uh, we, we got the snow boots. We're ready to go. We got the winter parka. Um, and I can't, I mean, I can't wait to meet everybody. Hopefully everything is kind of calmed down with the pandemic. It's at least by the summer next year. And we can have kind of supporters gatherings like we had in Greenville that first season. It was awesome. And meet get it, meet the supporters with such a cool part. And I, I think that's why they've, I've had such a good relationship with them and like, based on their posts on Twitter and things like that. A lot of that comes from the first year when yeah. we did all the off the field stuff and we hung out and we went to breweries or whatever the club set up for us. And hopefully that's allowed in Madison at some point next year. Yeah. Looking forward. All right. So we'll wrap it up now. That was our, our goodbye Greenville Hello Madison episode. Uh, very brief, but just wanted to give the fans, you know, supporters, the, the diehard listeners of the Elite Soccer Podcast and all the soccer podcasts, the Aristocrat Soccer Podcast, a bit of an insight into the decision-making process that went on with one Jake Keegan's move from Greenville Triumph to Fort Madison. Yes, it was it was a decision. I'll say that uh, a difficult one, but thank you, thank you for listening. Um, we will get this out as soon as uh, Madison makes their official announcement. I'm looking forward to that. It's always, it's always tough as a player, like waiting. Cause when you know where you're going, but the world doesn't know. And you're like, cause you can't really say anything. You're just like, hmm. Maybe uh, we should, maybe we should wait till uh, footwork puts out another podcast, but then. Wow. Well, well, we don't want to wait that long. <laughs> we're in 2022 or something. You know? Yeah. I think that they're, they're on hiatus. They're like the NASL. They're coming back eventually. <laughs> so we're giving them a shout out for nothing what the hell <laughs> that's two shout outs in one episode you guys are welcome dylan and sean you probably don't want to listen to this episode but here is your shout out um but until next time dave i'm the athlete i'm the advocate and we are, we are the aristocrats, aristocrats.